behind the Herald headlines with Darren Mann. Lead story in the Herald today, Wednesday the 16th of February 2020. The sixth state of Bay Clinics. Long queues, medicine shortages and rude staff, just some of the problems faced by many patients. Also on the front page today, ANC meetings to get protection as shot branch leader speaks out. The bullet is still lodged in the jaw of ANC branch leader Mazwi Mini as doctors are unsure about surgically removing the projectile, fearing it could lead to paralysis. For more on these stories and others, go to heraldlive.co.za. Each one of us has a story to tell and a story to share. A story that deserves to be heard. A story that inspires, motivates and gives people a reason to keep going. A story about our triumphs as individuals and as a team. A story about our humble beginnings and what the future holds for us. A story about our heritage and that which brings us together. It is these stories that connect us. The Herald. Whatever you live for, we live to tell that story for you. So as we heard, sinister developments as far as the dominant political party in South Africa goes at the moment, ahead of their provincial conference, which is taking place in East London next month, we've had a situation where ANC leaders have been fatally shot, have been wounded, and there appears to be a general climate of fear amongst many members ahead of that conference. To try and make sense of it here on Behind the Herald Headlines with myself, Darren Mann, we're joined by political analyst Ongama Ntimka. Ongama, thank you for your time. Good morning. These are sinister developments, aren't they? How do you see it? Good morning, Darren. Very much sinister. So what happens in the ANC, you have a situation in which um, candidate selection processes leading up to a local government election trigger uh, fierce competitiveness. But also what we are seeing as another phenomenon is the use of the same tactics of elimination and intimidation leading up to the conference of the party. And this in the Eastern Cape is not something that we have seen before. Um, even the one where there's you know, killings leading up to a local government election. It's not been rampant. I can recall Nabajuili, for example, in Warma in 2016. I can recall in the, la in the last election, uh, but I know that there were also concerns about uh, you know, intimidation and uh, attempted killings. So it's, it is a problem, it's a concern, it's even more concerning now that you've got two, two periods in which that becomes a factor, candidate selection towards local government and party, internal party, uh, you know, uh, leadership contests. It's a cause for great concern. You've gone back to 2016 for an incident, but looking back even further, what has happened? I don't recall this happening in the past. This is not the ANC of Mandela, Sisulu and Mbeki, for example. What has been the catalyst for this? When did it start and why? Sure. So um, if you look at KZN, it has been a hotbed of political violence in South Africa for a long time. And there we see both inter-party in the early nine, in the in the mid nineties, or I guess violence there, I mean, even during the times of the liberation struggle. So in the democratic period though, we've seen some um, inter-party, you know, uh, conflict and violence, but we also have seen significant intra-party uh, conflict and violence as people compete for controlling resources at local government level. It has mostly been in KZN, and there's a consensus about this among both uh, political scientists researching South Africa and election observers, but the flare-ups in different parts of the country uh, do concern us. And part of the reason why, for me, this has become an issue, it's because, uh, you, you, you know, leading in the ANC used to be a, a, a highly, you know, uh, 
you needed to be qualified in order to become a leader. So it was not an open for all type of thing. What we saw in the campaigns uh, in uh, into recent conferences was mobilization of people who ordinarily would not qualify to lead in the ANC, leading uh, in the party. Uh, so what has been called voting for that, where you take people in leadership positions who are in fact not leadership material. And because those people know that they are not, part of the competitive rivalry is characterized by elimination tactics. So my view to try and stretch it further than 2016, that's, that's been the key driver. This idea that anyone can be a leader and uh, because the stakes are high, people then resort to uh, violence, violence and intimidation. Ongama, do you see this violence and intimidation escalating as we lead up to the conference in East London? I hope not. Um, it's, it's, it hasn't been part of the political culture of the province. Um, even though, Darren, I must say, there has been allegations around, for example, competitive rivalry over access to government contracts has resulted in uh, some killings and intimidation. But in the realm of party political processes, we haven't seen as much of it as we are beginning to see now. And I hope that it's going to be contained. Um, it's, yeah, I, I, I hope it doesn't escalate beyond this. Also, leaders have got to have some sense to be able to quell tensions among their supporters. Um, and and if they do that, we, it's going it's going to be it's going to aid a lot in terms of you know making sure that there isn't uh, an escalation of violence. Um, but also one of my other areas in which I have I base my hope for a better political environment is the fact that the ANC is losing power and therefore the importance of ANC political office is not going to be as high stakes as we are seeing currently. The party's provincial chair, Oscar Mabayane, is expected to go up against provincial treasurer Babalo Madikizela for the top job at next month's conference. Is it as simple as supporters of Mabuyane versus supporters of Madikizela involved here, or does the factionalism spread beyond that? Sure. So on the issue of killings itself, one really at this stage, I haven't been able to come across a, a, a report that conclusively, you know, links uh, these killings to, 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 to that. But you are quite right that the rivalry has mainly been among those two factions. And what complicates things a lot more are the links of these factional battles to broader national uh, uh, battles. That's what has always precluded the ANC from making decisive interventions in lower structures, because not only are the interests to try and make sure that things at the local level are done in a way that restores party stability, if you like, or even municipal stability in many instances, but there has been an interest among those acting at a national or provincial level to try and intervene here, not in good faith per se, but in ways that position their faction in, a, in an advantageous position compared to the other faction. Just to sum things up and find out how things go from here, police investigations are ongoing. In terms of protocol and processes, do the ANC also launch an internal investigation and is there a likelihood of those responsible being brought to book one way or another? Unfortunately, the competency to investigate these kinds of things rests with the law enforcement agencies, given the criminality and the sensitivity of it. The ANC can investigate um, issues of people bringing the party into disrepute through their conduct in government or elsewhere. But when it comes to, you know, killings and related, I think it will be best left to law enforcement agencies. I mean, or for one, it, endanger, it, it, it pot potentially endangers the lives of those that could preside over those processes, but also um, it's not good for a private organization like the ANC uh, to investigate crime. Conduct, absolutely, but criminal criminality is best left with our law enforcement agencies. We'll leave it there. Political analyst Ongama Timka joining us on Behind the Herald headlines today. In a little while, we'll be speaking to Nelson Mandela Bay Regional Chair for the ANC, Babalwa Lubishe. Thank you for your time, Ongama. 
Thank you for having me. Thanks to you. We are joined now on Behind the Herald Headlines by the ANC Regional Chairperson Babalwa Lubishe. She's called for calm as the police investigation into the shootings, one fatal and one leaving a member injured as police investigation into these matters continue. Babalwa, is it fair to say that there is a climate of fear at the moment following these attacks? Good morning. Good morning uh, to you and listeners. There is there is a, a, a cloud of fear, but uh, we can't help but uh, soldier on because we, we are not on the know of whether this is a, a criminal element or where it's coming from. Have you called for extra security? And how are members dealing with what seems to be the ugly head of factionalism raising its head ahead of next month's elective conference in East London? We, we have not uh, uh, called for extra security uh, for anyone as yet because we, we believe that how we are structured as the organization, there are committees that uh, can deal, that are based, are member based, that can deal better with the management of uh, security. Babawa, are you personally afraid for your life? I have no reason to be. I mean, it's normal to, to get um, scared when, when an incident happens, but uh, as, as a believer in Christ, I'm not. But death threats. That's at another level, surely. And a number of those have been leveled to the extent that the ANC has even asked for community police forums to help protect meetings. Yes, um, it kind of um, um, normal within our organization that when we are going to meet in, in huge numbers, we try and manage um, uh, crowds. But uh, because we do not know where is this uh, emanating from, we said... Uh, Let's call for the community safety forums to be amongst us um, just to reinforce. Like yesterday, there were a branch a general uh, meetings that set, and there has not been any incident of crime that has uh, happened. Babawa, now next month, your party's provincial chair, Oscar Mabiani, is expected to go up against provincial treasurer Babalo Madikizela for the top job. Is it as simple as saying it's supporters of the one against supporters of the other, or would it be too early to reduce it to that? You know, the contest has, has um, came as an interesting uh, uh, one because we know the two as um, uh, coming together and uh, having the same position. So I guess it has caught all, all of us off guard, but I, I still believe that they can still talk and find a way to, to prevail in one uh, slate so that there is no contest. Do you think matters are likely to escalate as we get closer to the conference next month or not? No, I don't think they are going to escalate because uh, both these uh, uh, leaders, they are calling for for calm to to prevail. So if then that is the stance of uh, both of them, they don't want any uh, violence happening or any conference of uh, chairs happening again, I I believe that we are going to have a peaceful uh, conference uh, going forward. I think the rest of the country also hopes that because they're naturally shaken by developments within the dominant political party in this country. May it be a good conference, may it be a safe run-up to that conference. Babalwa, thank you so much for joining us on Behind the Herald Headlines today. That was today's edition of Behind the Herald Headlines with Darren Mann. 